Tonight on CTV, ASCSU election results are in, and we have your winners. An animal adoption agency has a new location and an optimistic view of the future. CSU graduates study cannabis with some results you may find interesting. All that and more from the people you know, starting now on CTV. Hello and welcome to CTV News. I'm Amelia Castaneda. And I'm Sunday Miller. Here's what's happening in the news near you. After weeks of campaigning and debating on the plaza, the student votes have been tallied. And if you haven't heard, the ASCSU 2018-2019 election results are in. Last night, the winners of the ASCSU elections were announced in the LSC, with the Siren Sullivan campaign winning the presidential vote and Ben Amundsen winning Speaker of the Senate. We did reach 21% of the student population, and next we move into Speaker of the Senate. And finally, President, Vice President. Their platforms highlighted student concerns such as parking, U plus two, and the CSU registration process. We are so incredibly grateful for every vote. Thank you so much. 21% is absolutely amazing. It has nothing to do with us. It is the students who realize that their expectations have been disregarded and they saw a candidacy that said, hey, I see that every day and I'm trying to fix it. For more information on your ASCSU representatives, you can visit collegian.com. Jeff Sadoba has accepted four Collins offered to be the city's new police chief. Former police chief John Hutto resigned May of 2017 amid criminal and civil cases with allegations of racial discrimination and excessive force. Terry Jones has served as the intern police chief and will continue serving until June 4th when Sudoba will step in. There have been two reported incidents targeting Muslims at University Village this past week. Once on Saturday where a Muslim staff member was aggressively addressed by a resident and again on Monday where a Muslim resident and her father received offensive ethic-based statements. The suspect for the second allegation is a CSU student and the issue is currently being addressed. Students have been told to review the CSU Code of Ethics, which states that verbal abuse, threats, intimidation, and bullying are prohibited and subject to disciplinary action. In 2016, Animal House, a rescue animal shelter, placed 983 dogs and puppies into loving homes. In late September of 2017, they relocated to a new facility in North Taft Hill Road. Among the goals for the new facility was to increase adoption space. Our animal of the week is in the adoption floor for this shelter. He was rescued from a hoarding situation, um, so he's a little on the shy side, but he is incredibly sweet. Sweet is just one of the many words used to describe Red, a male hound mixed dog who in addition to being friendly has a cuddling heart. Moderate to low energy kind of dog. Um, he'll sometimes, I've seen him pick up a toy and kind of think about playing with it and then he just takes it to bed with him and cuddles up with it. It's kind of precious. Approximately 15 dogs are in the adoption floor and among them is Red who is simply looking for a loving home. Since Red we're listing is seven years old, that puts him technically in our senior category and so his adoption fee would be 175. Red fits best with a calm, stable and patient home. He does like to explore but needs some time to, to gain his bravery from almost everyone who will give it to him and I think he'll learn to find a little bit of bravery in no time. All Red needs now is a forever home. If you or anyone you know is interested in adopting Red or any animal or are simply looking for volunteer opportunities you can visit animalhousehelp.org. 
Senator John Kafalas and Representatives Joanne Ginnell and Jenny Arndt will host their monthly town hall meeting this Saturday at 3.30 in the afternoon at the Old Town Library. They will be discussing legislation and going over the priorities of the community. For more information on this event, you can visit johncafalas.org slash calendar. Have you ever wondered what happens behind the scenes of a cannabis dispensary? A, student, a recent student led by, eight, by CSU graduate students found some no, noteworthy results. A recent study came out titled, Colorado Cannabis Workers Are Happy But Need Better Safety Training. We interviewed employees from Burt's Neighborhood Dispensary. Cannabis is my passion. Um, I'm a huge activist for cannabis. I'm a firm believer that it is going to save our planet, honestly. It is not only a medicine, it's a crop. And um, being able to work with something that has that much influence and potential is something that I hope to drive onto my career for the rest of my life. The population of the survey was cannabis workers that work directly with the cannabis plant. A survey within the study found that although workers do feel secure in their job and value their safety, they received little to no worker safety training since being hired. Typically we have a really good clientele, but there are that like 5 to 10 percent of people who almost feel maybe a sort of, uh, I, I don't know how to put this. Still getting used to the legality of things, so some people are still kind of used to it being like their homie's living room. The study was led by Colorado State University psychology graduate student Kevin Walters. Working at some of the dispensaries, um, there have been instances where people have tried to break in or, you know, customer hiffs in general. Keegan recognizes that his job may have risks that others don't. Everything is potentially under scrutiny. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people don't quite understand when they enter our shop is this is new and this is highly regulated and there are certain things that we have to be paying attention to and that is something that some people are very easy to come to understand that and other people almost become... Rachel values her position as more than just a dispenser. If I can inform somebody at the counter about what CBDs can do and help people, to me, I know that they're going to take that information and A, it's either going to help them or they're going to pass it on to somebody else who may have not been as informed. You can visit natsci.source.colostate.edu to read the full story. Students at CSU received an email from the school's public safety team that Joshua Jackson, a student and former student media volunteer, has recently been excluded from campus due to threatening behavior and threats of violence. He is described as 6 foot 1, 160 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes. If students see Jackson on campus, they are urged to call 911. Well, Amelia, it was awfully beautiful day out there, don't you think? It was. It was definitely a beautiful day, and I hope it sticks around. You honestly never know in Colorado. That's very true. Well, that's all we have for news. Stay tuned for weather, sports, and entertainment right after this. They said I couldn't dream called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back from Break Ramps. I'm weathering here, Keenan Cozart. It was a warm start to our day, but will it continue? Also, we have above-average hurricane temperatures predicted for this season, according to CSU 
a CSG team. Look at your current conditions. We are 37 degrees, partly cloudy, winds at 7 miles an hour, and gusts at 12 miles an hour, and we stayed warm. Look at your overnight lows. We're going to see um, 30s and 40s, 46 out in Grand Junction, along the I-25 quarter, 30s, December 39. Uh, 37 in Fort Collins, looking onto the plains, 30s, 36 in Lamar. Looking at tomorrow's forecast, it's going to be 41 degrees. You're going to warm up to um, humulus clouds, cloudy, rain's going to start, it's going to start raining, and into the afternoon it's going to start to snow. Clou um, winds at 7 miles an hour, and your sunset is at 6.36 a.m. Looking at your tomorrow's highs, we're going to see 40s and 50s, 68 in Grand Junction, 40s and 50s along the I-25 corridor, and 62 in Pueblo. Looking on the plains, we're going to see 30s and 40s, 46 in Lyman. Looking at your five-day forecast, Friday you're going to wake up, rain. Around noon, it's going to start to snow. Not very bad, about one inch. Saturday, we're going to see about 20% chance of rain. Still cloudy, but sun will... Um, come back. Looking on the Sunday, 20% chance the rain continues with some wind. Looking on to Monday and Tuesday, warm 73 to start your week. Looking at your opening day, it's going to be 40 degrees at um, batting off, um, cloudy and cold. Rain changes to light snow, 80% chance. There's a chance that this game will not go on till later in the day. I think about 6 o'clock, but no predictions according to the forecast that snow will come down from the north, will stay into the mountains. There's a um, cold front that came earlier this week that backs in and it starts to snow. Looking, this is your um, five coldest opening days for Colorado, for the Colorado Rockies. 40 degrees um, is your lowest so far. April 26, 1995 was the very first game the Colorado Rockies played at Coors Field. We're going to try to match that or even go lower as the temperatures start to fall during the, during the game time. About 32 degrees around the ninth inning. So if you're headed out there, dress warm, layer up, because the temperatures are going to start to drop tremendously. Looking at your Friday planner, you're going to wake up to rain. So if you're headed to school, bring a jacket. Around noon, you're going to need your winter hat, some gloves, snow, Looking at your afternoon, we're going to cloud up. The clouds go, um, the snow goes away, starts heading south into New Mexico. Stay tuned for Jared up next talking about uh, football and soccer. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. All right, listen to 90.5 KCSU Fort Collins with DJ Meme Beat. DJ Nightshade. DJ Wildcard. Hey, Fort Collins. Music to me is a place where you can find one of the best creative outlets that I can think of. An escape from the real world. Music to me is an expression of love. Go from like folk to hip hop to like classic rock, 1960s bossa nova. With music, there's like no boundaries. I work here because I love music, and you do too. Welcome back from the break into the Thursday Night Sports Show. I'm Jerry Stratton here to catch you up on CSU Athletics. The CSU football team is getting back into shape for their seventh spring practice of the year. The practice was played in the practice field and it was played with mostly familiar faces, but all eyes were on the two new players just brought in. As you can see right here, we have Nico Hall. He's one of the wide receivers recruited. He will be st most likely starting for the team. And we also have KJ Carter Samuels. He's a new quarterback for the team. He'll be assuming the new leadership role. He was originally going to go to US UCLA with Chip Kelly, but he ended up going to CSU last minute. 
And right here we have Warren Jackson beating off press coverage in some regular scheduled drills. He looks like just as good as last year, but this practice could not be done without the Oklahoma drills. This, the Oklahoma drills bring up some much needed energy for the next practices coming up. But the practice wasn't fully up to speed for Mike Bobo. Uh, after the practice, he had some positive comments for some positions in need for the Rams. Offensively, I, one, I would, one I would say has been Darius Wise. I, I've been, you know, he dropped a couple today, but I've been pleased with him. Uh, the thing about Darius, he can, he can line up in all three receiver positions. He's a smart kid, so he's able to jump in there and play a lot of positions. Uh, I've seen improvement uh, out of him. Uh, he's done a great job up front. You know, we're still trying to figure out which way to go, uh, but they I have seen improvement uh, out of that out of that group. Barry Wesley is a guy. Uh, a local kid from uh, Bear Creek uh, High School down in Denver that's uh, made improvement for us and running with the ones right now. We put him at, uh, at left tackle and moved uh, Tyler Bjorklund to right guard because of his improvement and because we needed some help at, at right guard. Uh, I've been pleased with the, with the tight ends uh, this, this spring. Isaiah Pomenzio is a guy that has improved. Uh, that's you know kind of saying hey I'm here don't forget about forget about me uh, defensively Trey Thomas has, has done some some nice things this spring he's always been able to run hard and been a great effort guys just been putting it all together and been able to make plays been a defense I've noticed him uh, so Darius Campbell's the guy defensively that they've been pleased with uh, playing nickel so there's been a you know there's been some bright spots uh, for guys, but those are some guys that necessarily are not names that were full-time starters and are doing some things pretty well this spring. The Rams' record was 7-6 and six last year, ending with a loss in the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. The Rams will continue to work for a better record for the fall. This Tuesday, for the first time, the CSU women's soccer team played on the new on-campus stadium. The game was played under the lights against the UNC Bears. Although the game was, sorry, the game was started off hot for Beth Plenel right here with a corner shot and it gave Lexi Swanson the assist for the first goal of the game. It was the Rams led one to zero at that time. The game was extremely physical on both ends and from right here we have a lofted kick and you can see the physicality on both sides on that play. Um, it was consistent the entire night, but beyond the physicality, this game never seemed to disappoint the crowd. Even with throw-ins such as this, like a flip, it was spectacular to watch. Um, so later on in the game, though, the Rams scored twice more, both being from Ali Paletto. Right here we have a missed shot, but then it was a followed up by Ali Paletto. That was her second goal of the game, making it 3-1, to one, but the game was not over yet for the Rams, sorry, for the UNC Bears. Uh, they could not stop them. The UNC Bears made a strong comeback effort. We have a corner kick right here leading into a, a header into the goal, making the game three to two. This comeback effort was still strong later on in the third third period. Um, the Bears were on offense and they passed it to the left side and they have another cross and it lead, led to a header juking out the goalie, making the game end at a draw three to three. Although the game ended with a draw after three periods, it was a better outcome than the last time the CSU played their Bears when they lost 2-1. to one. After, the, after the game, CTV reporter Sydney Wicker was able to talk to the head coach about the game. I am out here at the new on-campus stadium with Coach Hampton, the head coach of the soccer team. Coach, this was a great game for the Rams, especially starting off in the first two halves. But in the third half, the, um, the Bears came back, kind of tied this game up. Can you talk about that a little bit with me? No, I think one of the things about being able to play exhibitions like we do in the springtime, it allows us to mix some things up with some players and get them in some positions that we, we see them in the future. And, uh, you know, we, we got a good read on all the kids. Re the result, yes, you want to win them all. Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody had, everybody had a chance to, to show themselves tonight. So that was the point of the whole thing. Yes, I know we saw two goals by Ali Puletto. It was huge for you guys tonight. Can you talk about her and her energy tonight? Yeah, you, you hit it right there. <laughs> now, she is one energetic kid. Uh, you know, you get a kid like that and, and the heat's not beating down on her. It's a pretty, pretty good night to play. And, you know, you know we talked to her. She's sometimes overdoes it and we talked to her briefly before the game about just calm down a little bit and because she works so hard reward yourself for the uh, for the work that you put in so it's uh, she had a great game their next game will be played this sunday against metro state at 1 p.m at the csu soccer field 
In other news, the CSU men's track and field team is still ranked the highest in the Mountain West and now are ranked 15th in the NCAA uh, Division I in the cross country, sorry, based against the Cross Country Coach Association. This achievement can be greatly attributed to Mustafa Hassan with his back-to-back -back NCAA Indoor Shot Put Championship honors. CSU's distance runners have also been putting up incredibly impressive numbers. Cole Rockhold now ranks third in the NCAA with his 5K time, and Jarrell Mock's 10K is now, uh, now ranks seventh in, 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 the, sorry, in the NCAA, with teammate Grant Fisher being only two places behind him in the standings. The track and field team will be taking the field again this Friday in the Colorado Invitational in Boulder. Well, that's all the sports I have for today, but make sure to check Collegian.com and CTV Channel 11 on, for the latest in CSU athletics. I'm Jared Stratton, and up next is Ryan Chris with Stranger Things Entertainment. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. What's up, Rams? My name's Ryan Christ, and we're back on another fantastic Thursday where we're talking all things entertainment. Stranger Things, the prime time. Have you seen Stranger Things, Ryan? <laughs> yes, Jared. I, I have seen Stranger well, Things. I was what, just what about, about the part where like he's in the upside down? I, I did see that. Well, that was a great. And then then Barb when she was in the upside down as well. Did I, you see that part? I did see that part. I'm about and, to and talk don't about. Don't even Stranger get me started on Nancy. Okay, okay. J thank you for telling me, but uh, we we need to keep going with the show. Thank you for. Okay. I, Let me know I when have you watch seen it. it. Let me know when you watch it. I have seen it. But okay. Anyways. The primetime Emmy-winning show that no matter how many times you've seen it, people will still recommend it to you is in Hot Water. It has been praised for its originality about 80s kids fighting demon is now faced with a lawsuit on plagiarism. A filmmaker named Charlie Kessler claims the Duffer Brothers ripped off his idea for a Netflix show. Kessler made a short film back in 2012 called Montauk based on government experiments. At a party at the Tribeca Film Festival, Kessler Kessler pitched a TV show version of this movie about a boy who gets lost, a cop with a troubled past, all centered around government experiments. Sound familiar? Well, it should, because that is the main plot points of Stranger Things. As of now, Netflix and the Duffer Brothers have not commented on these strange allegations. It's official. Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan are splitting up after nine years of marriage. These two actors met in 2005 on Step Up, the dance film, where they both played two different high schoolers on opposite sides of the track. The couple released a long post on Twitter explaining everything so they could keep their fans updated. They said, we are still a family and we will always be loving, dedicated parents to Everly. We won't be commenting beyond this and we thank you all in advance for respecting our family's privacy. Sending lots of love to everyone, Chan and Jenna. This news came as a shock to many because Everyone saw it as a perfect marriage. And then Jenna was quoted saying, when people say you guys have such a perfect life, I want to scream and tell them no one's perfect. Well, these quotes are all that we'll have to know for now. I guess all we can say is Jenna wasn't the one for Channing anymore. In case you didn't know, the ASCSU elections were last night where the student body voted for their next president. While some voted for the real candidate options, others decided to write in who they thought should be president. This is one of many write-ins, but these were the most popular presidential write-ins. Coming out of fifth place was none selected with almost 50 people voting for no one. But don't get that confused with our seventh place winner of none with two votes. There's also Noah Ottersetter who got 20 votes. Now I don't know who Noah is. All I know is that he goes here and he's some guy from Lakewood. Some other funny presidential votes that weren't on this list were Harambe, 30 to 33 squirrels, 
Mr. Poopy Butthole, Tony Frank, and my personal favorite, all of ASCSU operates in the shadows. Some of other ones for Speaker of the Senate were none selected at 77 votes, Harambe at four, Donald Duck at three, Eric Cartman at two, then of course, someone wrote in, this is a big joke, and everyone's favorite senator, a bag of chips. I wonder what a bag of chips would do if it won president. Would they just put it on the presidential chair, or would we get to vote on what type of bag of chips? I mean, I'd vote for Doritos. This past weekend, these local brewers came together to create awareness for our water. Good water equals good beer. At the Carnegie Center for Creativity, the Pooter Heritage Alliance was having their first Pooter Poor Brew Fest, but this wasn't your typical brew fest. This brew fest features 11 local breweries, live music, education, and learning centers, and even activities for kids, all to spread the word that good water equals good beer. So we have to try to take care of the water that we have and utilize it to the best of our abilities, whether it be in agriculture, or industry, or in recreation and natural resources. The water is important for all of us, and it's the only reason we're here. How are local breweries helping spread the word to keep the Poudre River healthy? A lot of residents here love the craft beer culture. We can uh, serve as a conduit for them to educate themselves about uh, the importance of the river. And we have this awesome craft beer soapbox uh, to be able to spread, spread the word. With Colorado at the top of the watershed and new changes to the Poudre River like the Whitewater Park, maintaining our water's health is important more so than ever. We realize that we need to drink water. We realize we want to shower, and sometimes there's um, days when you can't have those uh, water issues. But I don't think people realize that water is in everything. It's in the clothes you wear. It's, it's in the carpet that you walk on. It's, it's in everything, and without it, nothing would be here. To learn more about our water, go to the pooterheritage.org. Now, I'm joined here with Skylar Richardson, the director of the CSU Fashion <laughs> Show. And can you thank you for becoming on the yeah, show with no, us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Awesome. So as we know, Spectrum, the fashion show, mm -hmm. is tomorrow. And this is our annual fashion show. Mm -hmm. So what can we expect with tomorrow? Oh my gosh, there's so much. Well, the four committees have been working tirelessly um, to produce a spectacular show. So we have sponsorship committee, model and garment. Um, there is publicity, which I have worked most closely with, and then there's stage and set design. Um, and they are all currently at the Lincoln Center right now setting up and going through rehearsals with all of the models. We have over 60 um, models and there's 24 senior collections. That's awesome. So what will be different from last year's show? Because I went last year and covered it, right. and it was a great show. But what will be different? What can we expect to be different well, this year? Well, the stage and set design is a little different because our theme is spectrum. So that kind of encapsulates um, diversity and um, all the diversity of the garments themselves. Um, and we're trying to capture um, series of light on the stage. So we have a very big projector up. Um, there's going to be three different triangles um, under which the models will walk. And I think just the overall vibe is um, much bigger this year because of the 24 collections versus the 14 that we had last year. Awesome. I will ask one last qu quick question. Yeah. So last year, there was, of course, the parachute collection, which was very unique. Yes. It was donated and mm -hmm. it looked amazing. Do we have any unique collections like that this year? Well, we do have the parachute designs. Oh. Um, they're donated from Aspen Point out of Longmont, Colorado. Um, the recycled parachutes from veterans and the senior, excuse me, not senior, junior draping class um, produces these um, every year. So that will actually start the show this oh, year. Wow. This is the first time that draping will um, start the show. And ultimately, there's just, it's a whole myriad of collections. There is a men's collection this year. Um, children will have little ones walking on stage um, alongside some of our models. Um, there's a many plus size collections, um, one bathing suit, co you know, collection. So tune in for that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just really going to stand out, all of them. That's awesome. Well, that is all the time we have for it. Thank you so much for coming on the so show, much. Skylar. Thank you. And make sure to stay tuned for Monday Night Sports Show and Tuesday for Lauren Wilson's coverage on Spectrum, the fashion show. And have a great night, Rams.